All right, going to do an unpowered walkthrough and a few thoughts on this uh, Dentron Clipperton L. And this is a 4572B tube um, base box. And also Dentron made a 160-10L, which is extremely similar you know how the DNA amps they came out with the Phantom and then they called the uh, later with the FCC you know got involved they changed it to the PDX 400 and the Maverick 250 changed to the MDX uh, 200 I believe well anyway it's similar at least I think so without any facts that uh, Dentron did the same thing with the Clipper Clipperton L here um, the Clipperton is the later um, amplifier. Their um, original or first version was the um, 160-10L. And exactly what the 160-10 stood for is it came from the factory. It hit 160 through 10 meters. That dash, then that's the 160-10. 160 meters to 10 meters from the factory but when the FCC clamped down um, they they first made it where you could if you sold a amp that would do 10 meters it had to be a hundred watt drive um, but then CBers you know they just got um, driver amplifiers that would make a hundred watts or radios that would do a hundred watts and that's what they drove the bigger amplifiers with you know back in the day so that didn't work too well so then the FCC changed the rules and said, you know, it was basically illegal to, you know, make and sell an amplifier that would do 10 meters at all. And hence, people took the same amplifier and they took 10 meters out of it from the factory. And that's what they did with this Clemperton L. And if you see this 28, somebody had to mod this and change the band switch and open it up to get it to go on 10 meters because again from the factory uh, 10 meters was bypassed on this from the factory this band switch only went from the um, 21 to the 1.8 which is basically 160 meters 80 meters 40 meters 20 meters 15 meters and hence over here uh, 10 meters was not activated you couldn't even switch to it you had to modify it to get it to go over there and somebody um, you know made this sticker for 28 or 28 megahertz which is uh, 10 meters um, also this amp here um, since it didn't have 10 meters in it um, it has the SSBCW which is basically high and low uh, high voltage on the power supply this amp runs at um, 2700 volts on the high, which is the SSB, and 1800 volts on the low. Whereas the earlier version, at least some of them, some of them had the added, you know, high power SSB tap. But on most of the earlier versions, it ran on 2000 volts only. Um, and there was no high and low switch or CW SSB switch. Some of them did, you know, they sold different versions with export and, and SSB, you know, switch added. But most of the 160 that 10 L were, um, basically medium power only. They didn't have the high low switch again. Um, other than that, it's a pretty basic amp on off switch. And while we on the on off switch on this Clipperton, um, version of it, the on off switch directly turns on the power to the amplifier where on the 160-10L the on off switch turned on a relay and the relay um, turned on the power to the transformer hence the amplifier so actually uh, when it comes to that the 160-10L was a little bit better because you got high current and high power going through these little on off switch and it kills the switches Whereas um, having a switch turn on a relay and let the relay do the dirty work um, is a better idea. If you've seen that Alpha that I recently did a um, video on, the Alpha PA70, it had relays and soft start and all that other stuff that did the dirty work. Where on this, there is no soft start, none of that. And you hit that switch, 
the switch itself you know turns on the high power and and powers up the amplifier no slow start self start none of that that's a very basic amplifier do have the um, standby operate um, it runs on a foot switch um, to key it up no um, RF sniffing circuit or, or keying stuff in it which most ham uh, amplifiers don't have anyway um, power light um, lights green transmit lights right lights red when you transmit basic um, tune and load here um, to tune up the tubes um, the um, 21 or 1.8 megahertz is basically marked so if you're going to tune this amp for uh, 27 or 28 megahertz you basically um, start you know somewhere over there which is you know where it's pointed at now and the load cap you would start at uh, close to the minimum too and this one actually tunes up about where the 9 is which is you know toward the minimum on the capacitor um, normally on ham amps that have all these bands in it the tune and load are tuned up near minimum capacitance and the um, heavier or higher capacitance would be for the uh, lower bands um, or the lower megahertz higher bands uh, the bands work in opposite of the megahertz um, as you go um, up in megahertz you go lower in bands and as you go down in megahertz you go higher in the band hence the um, um, 6 meter band you know lower in band is higher in megahertz it's actually 52 megahertz and it works like that band switch here um, tune it to the right band I already explained that it didn't come with 10 meters in it uh, one thing I just learned looking at the schematics and all these is that um, the 160-10L, or was it this one? I think it was this one. It also came with a um, thing they called the filter or FL1, and it's kind of secret. But what FL1 did was a uh, 11 meter attenuator on the input side, and they called it a filter. And uh, its only purpose, it was like a TVI trap, but it didn't trap TVI. It actually trapped or blocked. 11 meters only so it let 10 meters and 15 meters and all that through there but it wouldn't let 11 meters through there that's the only other one I saw that did that was the Heathkit SB221 not the 220 but the 221 it had a thing they called filter in there and it blocked the same thing um, but they don't talk about that too much because they don't want you know CBers bypassing that or taking that out and using it on uh, 11 meters so here's the inside of the amp. This is a very basic amp, you know, uh, single power supply, transformer, interlock. So when you take the um, top cover off, it disengages the um, power going into the amp. That's been bypassed on this one. And I am unplugged and drained and, and all that. Um, your RF relay for your in and out, and it switches it. And it also grounds the... Um, the um, grid for the tubes to operate the tubes um, high voltage and low voltage power supply circuitry here um, this amp with the higher voltage tap the high low voltage tap that I mentioned earlier it has eight total capacitors and these were the original capacitor cells in it these big old guys here you can see the size difference and these were 125 um, MFD at 450 volts whereas the new ones in there are 150 MFD so you up the MFDs and it's there the same voltage 450 volt and this one used 8 whereas that one I talked about earlier the 160L original version it used um, 6 um, capacitors and here's a schematic for the um, 16010L you can see the um, six capacitors here and a total of six diodes you know that's all it used and here's a schematic of the Clipperton here and you can see the eight capacitors and I believe 12 diodes um, 12 diodes is kind of overkill but you know it's got 2700 volts on the high side as opposed to this again having um, 2000 volts um, pretty basic amp these um, Resistors here for the voltmeter 
you can see the bleeder resistors near the caps uh, down there basically um, the diode some more bleeder resistors um, it's another diode and a green cap and a resistor down there that's for the low voltage um, pretty basic stuff um, this here is called a bifiller choke and what it is on this the um, um, cathode or the windings or the filament whew, getting a little tongue tied um, and the drive go to the same thing with these grounded grid amplifiers they go to the same um, input point so the AC comes in on one side of this and then goes into the tubes and the uh, input your power input comes in through that one and then to the same point on the tubes so what this does it lets that low voltage or not low vo you know it is low voltage but that 60 hertz 6 volt AC to light the tubes a pass through this but RF doesn't like going through this coil here so the RF is blocked coming back out so your low voltage or low frequency AC in but the RF can't come out is the purpose of that guy and here's your um tank circuit with all the um, ham band stuff on it, in it and I always say that um, for 10 or 11 meters um, they will both work unless you got something like that F, that filter or that trap in it uh, they both are tuned you don't have to do anything else and I say you need about four turn, turns of coil and again it looks like about three and a half turns of coil you know starting on this left side going to this tap that's actually the 10 meter cat tap and 15 uh, that's a 20 over to this coil is your 40 your 80 and your 160 meters you're using you know all that going around if this was mono banded for 10 meters 11 meters only you would not you'd only need from um, that left side to that part a coil you would need any of this coil any of these taps any of these jumpers and any of these switched in extra capacitors here they're all for those um, ham bands as you go um, up the band you need more and more capacitors or capacitance and those switch it in as needed with this um, second um, row of the band switch here that uh, switches in the coil and that switches in the capacitors as needed so again if you was going to convert this to 10 11 meters only you could you know cut it there and then run this wire right to the um, low capacitor here for the output and then you could get rid of all that all these you can get rid of the band switch and you can get rid of all these capacitors here and I think I've said earlier a time or two but didn't make a big deal of it but an amplifier that's mono banded and you get rid of all that extra stuff and extra wire it will do about three four five percent more than an amplifier that is um, a multi band like this one because your power you're gonna lose just a little bit going through all this stuff you know uh, even on 10 meters as it is now it's gonna go um, from that tap into the um, band switch and then out the band switch and it goes out through this side of the capacitor and through here and then you know out to the output whereas you could make it a much more direct line without all that extra unneeded junk if you wanted to mono band it however you know because of value and who knows you may sell it to a ham or something like that um, most people like to use the um, keep the um, multi band in there or keep it factory um, this one doesn't have that FL1 uh, block or trap that I was talking about somebody already took it out again somebody already had mounted this for 10 meters so I can't show you that since it's gone it uses the 4572B's they are mounted horizontally where the uh, 16010L they um, mounted them vertically but you know um, pretty heavy duty built amp it does use a you know fan there um, nice um, choke Got your parasitic suppressors um, you know uses doorknob caps through it and your plate blocking cap there is also a single um, doorknob you know not bad made pretty uh, basic amplifier so that's my quick walk through and I guess thoughts on this one and um, 
interesting finding another amp with that um, and they call it FL1 in this and they call it a, a FL1 in the uh, Heathkit SB221 that makes me wonder you know how many other amps um, that they did this to but all right that's my thoughts and my unpowered walkthrough of this uh, Dentron Clipperton L and my thoughts on the um, very similar uh, Dentron 160-10L that came with 10 meters but um, in it from factory but only had the single tap for the um, high voltage. Okay, that's it for this one. Bye.